Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. This video is going to focus on our first series for First Aid Level 1. We're going to discuss a couple of topics that's in the books and try and make it as simplified as possible for you to understand. I hope the information will be valuable and that it will be able to help you in future if something happens. Um, the reason why I'm doing it in the living room at the moment is because we have no electricity at the moment. The power is off, so I cannot do it in my studio. I wanted to do it outside, but unfortunately everything is making noise. There's birds and everything screaming and going on, so this is why we're in here. Hi guys, subscribe to my channel now so that you do not forget. Hit that bell icon and get notified of my further uploads. Lastly, feel free to comment. Show me some love by giving me a thumbs up at the end of the video. So you probably want to know why do I need first aid? Why do I need to know this kind of stuff? Why do you need first aid? Probably because there's idiots like this. Well, it's better to have it and not need it, than to need it and not have it. It is important to know first aid, especially if you are, uh, especially if you are a parent and you have children in the house, especially small kids. You need to know what to do in an emergency. Everyone has to know how to do first aid, because there will be a time in your life when somebody is going to be need your help and you need to be able to do something for them. Most people that don't have first aid are the ones who panic and overreact to the smallest injuries. And the smallest injuries are the type that you can actually handle yourself in most cases does not need major intervention. Small things or small actions can make the difference. What is first aid? First aid is the immediate care given to an injured or suddenly ill person. First aid does not take the place of proper medical care. It consists only of providing temporary assistance until competent medical care, if needed, is obtained or until the chance of recovery without medical care is assured. Okay, so, secondly, I'm not going to talk in this video about first aid boxes, first aid kits. That's something you can discuss with your pharmacist or doctor or wherever you go to buy a first aid box, first aid kit. All you need to know about a first aid kit is that you must keep an eye on everything that expires don't have expired stock in your box. Most of the reasons why some people don't want to be first aiders are because they are scared of the law. They are scared that if they do something they might be sued for something that they have done. Now I'm going to lay out a couple of ground rules or laws for first aiders which will actually help you in case of an emergency so that you can know what to do without getting into any trouble. The first law that we're going to discuss is called the Good Samaritan Law. The Good Samaritan Law provides protection against lawsuits. Please just find out what stipulations there are in your country for the Good Samaritan Law, because other countries might have different ideas of how the law works. So when does the Good Samaritan Law apply? It applies in the following. When you are acting in an emergency, if you are acting in good faith, if you are acting without compensation, and if you are not found guilty of any malicious misconduct or gross negligence towards the victim. Okay, so if you follow any of those four things, you'll be fine under the Good Samaritan Law. Hi, I'm Rocky Murray, and this is the Racquetball Trick. A duty to act requires a person to give first aid. So you might want to know when does the duty to act apply? It applies in the following situations. When your employment requires it, so that means your employer has sent you on a first aid course, you are a qualified first aider, and suddenly there's an emergency at work. So if your employer asks you to help at work, then you are obligated to do that. The second place will be where pre-existing responsibility exists. Um, that means basically that if you are a parent 
you have a pre-existing responsibility towards your child. So if your child gets injured, it is your responsibility to help them out. And also, if you are a driver and the passenger gets injured, then it is your responsibility to help the person. The third law that I would like to discuss with you is called consent. A first aider must have consent from anyone before they can do something. You cannot just go and touch anyone wherever you want to touch them when they are awake. So you first have to ask a person, am I allowed to assist you? Now, if a person can't talk, they can give you expressed consent, which means they can nod or give a thumbs up. Then you can provide the care they need. Always remember to introduce yourself to the victim. Tell them, hi, my name is Charles. I am here to help you. Can I be of assistance? The next one is called implied consent. So when do you use that? Implied consent is used if you are working with a child where the parent is not around, if the patient is unresponsive and unconscious, so he's sleeping, he's not awake, and if the patient cannot speak, if he is too drunk to be able to walk, he is not coherent, then you use implied consent, which basically means that you feel that this person would have wanted you to help them. Like in a case with a child, you do know that this child's parent wouldn't want him to keep on bleeding. So then you obviously use implied consent. Warning, the following laws will drop you into shit. Abandonment. You are not allowed to start treating a patient or a person and then leave them halfway through the treatment without handing them over to a higher qualified person than yourself or somebody equally as qualified as you are. Which means if you are just a normal person walking on the street and you start helping someone, you cannot just climb in your car and leave the scene. You actually have to be able to wait and assist them until a paramedic comes along. Even with paramedics, we have to hand them over to a doctor. Uh, I don't know who doctors hand over to, but I cannot leave a patient if I don't hand him over to someone who's a bit higher qualified than me. That's the basic rule. Stay with him until it's over. Okay, and the final law is negligence. Now, negligence is when you go out and you actually increase the person's injuries. You make the situation worse by doing something that you were not supposed to. Negligence can bite you in the ass if you had a duty to act, but you didn't do it. So on that point, you might want to ask, what about this life over limb situation? What if you are in a situation where a guy is trapped in a car and it's burning and you know that if you don't pull him out of the car within the next few seconds, he's going to burn to death. But you also know that if you're going to do that, you're going to break his legs or you're going to have to injure him more. In that instance or in that case, there is such a thing as called life over limb. Rather let him lose his leg than die. That's the gist of it. So that is the laws and the basic beginning of the series. This is now the serious part of the whole video, where I cannot do anything entertaining. Okay, but from here on out, I will try and make it a bit more interesting to help you guys out. Well, that's in all the time we have for. This is the first video. If you like the information, give me a thumbs up. Please remember to subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified of any of my further medical or any other type of videos uploads. You have to subscribe and you have to hit the bell icon, otherwise you're not going to be notified. Okay, so have a great day. See you on the next one. Cheers.